Hey lovelies! So today what we're going to talk about is how to grow your hair out. And most people think it'll be really simple. I just don't cut my hair. But my experience is, is that if you want the shine and if you want it all to really reach um, and not be broken off, there's a number of things that you should do or you can do. So all of the things that I'm going to talk about you can pick and choose <laughs> like a cafeteria if you will or you can do them all. My hair is currently, um, my husband measured it for me this morning, it is 28 inches of shining glory. Um, it's, it's my favorite thing about myself. Um, I don't always have the greatest self-esteem but I always feel pretty good about my hair. So, uh, when I'm having a bad hair day, look out. Okay, so what I'm going to start out with is the things that you need to do daily. Daily, you need to be taking a vitamin. Not all vitamins are made equal. Lately, I have been taking the vitamin code WOMEN. Um, it's a raw, whole food, multi, live, probiotic, and enzyme vitamin. That, that's a lot. Um, this is a really good quality multivitamin. I can tell the difference when I take a really high quality one and when I don't. These are more expensive, but again, you get what you pay for. I've also had really good um, luck with Rainbow Light prenatal. It doesn't have to be prenatal, it could just be a really good women's vitamin, but vitamins really do help. Um, I also will take um, fish oil for the omegas. I um, think that my hair is shinier. I know that people give it to their dogs to make their coat shinier. Um, you're not going to hurt anything by taking the omegas. The other thing is, is you need to have a really healthy uh, shampoo and conditioner. Now I can't tell you for your hair type what that's going to be, but a lot of uh, shampoos and conditioners contain sulfates and really harsh chemicals, so it might be worth your while, especially if you're growing your hair out, to spend a little bit of money on a good shampoo and conditioner. Now, um, one thing that I do for my hair that you're probably not going to want to hear is I go ahead and I skip out on this. I like to let it air dry. And if that means washing your hair at night, then that's what it means. <laughs> um, this just does so much damage over time. Especially if you're going to go ahead and then throw this baby in afterwards or this one. Um, you're really doubling up. Having said that, I don't expect you not to style your hair. Uh, so, if you are going to use a hot tool, you need to prep your hair. I really like the John Frieda Frizzies um, Thermal Protection Formula. I put it on my hair while it's wet, and it really does keep it nice and sleek and shiny, and it protects it from thermal damage. If a serum isn't really your style, um, Nexus uh, makes us a spray that you can spray onto your hair but whatever you're doing you really need to protect your hair from thermal damage because that is going to get you. You're going to get the split ends and your journey is going to be over. So that covers, no it doesn't quite cover daily and then also we need to talk about brushing. So you shouldn't brush your hair when it's wet. That maximizes breakage, it's really, really bad for it. If you cannot stop yourself, there is a special brush that's made for brushing your hair when your hair is wet. I don't know how well it works. I don't know if it's a gimmick. I just know that it exists and I don't have it. I just wait until my hair is pretty dry and then I run a brush through it. I've never had any trouble with knotting or anything like that. Um, but the best thing you can do, you know, blot it really well and then um, just let it air dry. The next thing that I need to talk about is about weekly you need to... Uh, I misplaced it. I'll be right back. So about weekly you need to do a really great deep conditioner. There is nothing that I recommend more than this if you can see it. Um, you would get it at Sally's. It's in the blue tube. It is their Ion Moisture Solutions Extreme Moisture Cream. 
I have not found anything more moisturizing than that. That This is extremely moisturizing. I think I experienced a moment when I was using it too often where I was like, I think my hair has too much moisture, which sounds really weird, but um, the product is amazing. I think a tube of it is like $8 if you're not part of the club and like $7.50 if you are. It, either way, not an expensive product and if you're using it once a week, again, it's not going to break the bank. The next thing I will say is that every six to eight weeks, I do a protein treatment. And it is made by AFOG, which is spelled A P H O G E E. And that company makes um, a protein treatment, and it's two step. I only buy the one step because the second step is a conditioner. And I happen to think that their conditioner doesn't do a very good job smells like old lady perfume and I don't like it. So I substitute in that blue uh, tube I just showed you after I do the protein treatment. And I'll describe the protein treatment to you because a lot of people do it and they think that it's ruined their hair, that it's done something wrong. So you will put it in your hair, you'll get it in the shower, you'll get your hair wet, and then you'll blot it and you'll put this treatment into your hair. and get ready for it because it stinks. You are going to smell. Don't do it while anybody's home. Do it with the windows open. It is bad. Really bad. Okay. So then you're going to wait for it to harden like a rock, essentially. This can take a half hour. It can take 45 minutes. You can speed it up a little bit with the hair dryer, but really it doesn't do too much. Once your hair is rock hard, you will rinse it out and then it will be really coarse because you've just added protein to your hair which is not necessarily going to be soft and so then you'll condition it with the blue tube that I showed you and then after a couple of washes it will be soft again. This is going to mend any of the holes that you have in your hair, it's going to strengthen it, it's going to add um, breakage protection, it's really important and um, Especially if you're somebody who's coloring your hair, do this before you color your hair. And while we're on that topic, if you're growing your hair out, try not to color it. Try not to like do relax, uh, relaxers. Try not to do perms. All of these things just fry your hair. And you're not going to get to this great 28-inch hair um, if you're doing all these uh, chemical treatments. And then the other thing that is fairly obvious is that you are going to want to get your split ends cut. Now, I disagree with hairstylists and how often you need to be doing this. They say you need to do it every... Ooh, somebody's angry. I'll be right back. On the topic of cutting off your split ends, I really disagree with hairstylists. Now, I didn't go to school for it, but I feel like if I'm getting my hair cut every six to eight weeks, I'm never making any progress. So I go in for a trim every 12 to 16 weeks, and I don't have too much of a problem with uh, split ends, and my ends are not overly dry, you know, they, they have life in them, etc. And that is all that I have for you. Um, I hope that it's been helpful. I hope that you've learned something. I hope that you're not looking at me and going, oh my gosh, this lady is crazy and she worships her hair. Um, it's not that. I just really like having long hair. And there are some things you need to do to have long hair so that you don't look like you have scurvy. I'm you know, you don't want to have long hair that's like all PC and dry and split and really unhealthy looking. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message, comment, whatever. But until next time, bye-bye.